the government isn't really doing enough to help people with Parkinson's. And uh, I feel this is an opportunity to change that. So we know that Parkinson's is second only to Alzheimer's in terms of older brain diseases, so diseases of the aging brain and degeneration of the brain. And at the minute we quote the fact that it's about one in a thousand people, but that increases as you get older to about 1% of all pensioners who have Parkinson's. Now we know the aging population in Australia is going to increase, so the number of older people we have living here is going to increase. And it's predicted over the next 20 years, there'll be an 80% increase in the number of Parkinson's disease cases here in Australia. Well, um, my husband's had Parkinson's for um, 20 years, um, and of course he had to retire early. So, I mean, with seeing specialists, therapists, medication, um, it, he's had um, the DBS operation. It's been a big impact, you know, on our, on our lives. Um, financially and emotionally. You know, it's come to the stage now where what we thought our little nest egg would have lasted us, that um, it's virtually gone. So we already know that uh, Parkinson's is costing Australia $8 billion per year. And I guess that if we have an 80% increase in the number of cases in 20 years time, we don't have time to wait. We need to act now with some very cost-effective solutions. Uh, better care for us is, um, is a Parkinson nurse, more Parkinson nurses. An ideal situation would be if, if you know, the, the, there was um, Parkinson nurses that I could just get on the phone and say, do you think you could just give me a, um, you know, a visit? Um, there's a few problems that I'd like to discuss with you. Um, I think, you know, it, it would be an, a, a big help to all carers that, you know, I came for people with Parkinson's. Parkinson nurses, of course, can fill a position that is now uh, filled by the hospitals and the neurologists, which would save the government money. Look, I think what we hope to see with governments is that they're spending money wisely and targeting things that can actually result in real benefits. And while we wait and hope that someone's going to come up with a cure, there's some very practical things that could be offered right now that are actually probably very cost effective. Just the idea of keeping someone at home from a nursing home for an extra 12 months would probably save over $30,000 a year. If a nurse costs, let's say, $100,000 a year, well, if they just keep three patients out of a nursing home for a year, which is a very modest achievement, in actual fact, they probably do a lot more than that, you, you can see that the, the politics of this is brainless. I mean, effectively, everyone would realize that this is the way forwards. But people have to be brave enough and say, yep, this is the way we tackle this with a coordinated approach. We know there's a huge amount of evidence to show that when workforce is, is provided with training, education, and workforce development, it makes a tremendous difference in their capacity to actually deal with people with Parkinson's. It increases their awareness, it expands their understanding of the needs of people with Parkinson's, it reduces the level of stigma, and improves their capacity to actually provide care for people. One of the biggest benefits would be in uh, people's ability to diagnose the disease, which often takes a very long time. So an expansive range of health professionals would all benefit, as well as the Parkinson's community would benefit from workforce training and education. My name's Geoffrey Hall. Uh, Monica Hall is my wife. She was diagnosed with Parkinson's when uh, I was 49. The impact of that, the implication of that, was um, fairly devastating as um, what lies in the future and how the plans that you've made in life, how that all of a sudden changes. It just is so um, desperate to work out what you, what you can do to make it better for now that really a lot of 
a lot of those dreams, you stop dreaming. And I think, that's a hard bit, you know, because you don't, yeah, it's because you don't dream for the future. Yeah, you just get through each, each, each day. The lack of research into Parkinson's is very disappointing because the impacts on myself and my family are tremendous. My wife touched on the point that um, in terms of having an uncertain future, at the moment, there's, uh, with the current level of research, there's a fairly certain future, and it's not pleasant. My message to the policymakers, if I could be so bold, would be that we realise this is going to take multiple prongs. We obviously need greater investment in research, so that we can get better treatments out there to patients who need them. We also, as I say, probably need a, a, a skilled workforce of nurses, um, who are able to deal with these problems. So specialist nurses based in the community dealing with problems at the point of delivery. On top of that, what we realise from some of the research that I've done is that even our GPs and other specialists don't know enough about this disease. So we actually have to wait, find ways of educating them and upskilling them in dealing with this very common disease that has very different faces in every patient. And finally, I think on a society level, we need to find cost-effective ways so that we can actually embrace uh, this disease going forward, realising there's going to be much more of it, so that we can actually have a strategy that says, yeah, we welcome you at the front door of the disease all the way through the course of it as it gets more and more increasingly difficult for you.